a couple days ago, I was going through some old backup drives and I came across some old footage that was shot on the GoPro Fusion. Now, for those of you that don't know what the GoPro Fusion is, that was GoPro's first attempt at a 360 camera. And if you never heard of it, well, you're not missing anything. But the footage is useful. I, I like the footage. However, it's in the format that came out of the GoPro Fusion. So I need to convert to something that I can use in a regular editor. And that can only really be done with GoPro's Fusion Studio desktop app, which they pretty much did an end of life on a long time ago. But you can still get version 1.3 off their website. There is a 1.4 beta they released, but I remember that being really, really buggy. So I downloaded the version 1.3 so I could convert the footage. All right, you see that I have the application already installed. Now, when I go to launch it, I right click and hit open, nothing happens. Now, when nothing happens and like there's no error notification, the first thing and really the only thing you can do is go to Windows Event Viewer. So let's go down here to Event Viewer. And I'm going to come down to Windows Logs, Application, and right there is an error. We see Fusion Studio, and it says faulty module name is libeay32.dll. A DLL is a dynamic link library. I guess the best way to think about it, it's a dependency for your application. It has some sort of features or functionality that your application relies on. A quick search on Google brought up this old Reddit post from a couple of years ago. This commenter said that if you rename the file or just move it, that it should work interesting usually you don't fix something by removing a dependency but let's try it out probably the best way to find your install directory is to right click on the shortcut go to properties here's the folder path right here i'm going to copy that i'm going to hit windows key plus the e key to open windows explorer i'm going to paste in the folder path now we're going to search for lib l i b e a y there it is right there so what we're going to do is we're going to rename it click on that and what i like to do is just add the extension dot b a k dot b a k is short for backup this is from my linux days when i used to be a linux administrator and we worked only in the terminal all day long and there was no recycle bin so we didn't like to delete files because that was super permanent so what we normally do is we'd either move the files to a temporary folder or we would change the file name by adding dot bak to the extension so i'm going to hit enter i hit continue all right let's see if this will open up now I no longer have a fusion, but I do have the footage. So I'm going to click on add media. And here is where my footage is. Now there was two camera lenses on the fusion and it produced two separate folders with footage from the back and from the front. So this is how it was formatted back in the day. I'm going to hit select folder. All right, here we go. It looks like my footage loads up. I can look around the 360 view just fine. I reset that. I'm just gonna do this, scrub it for a bit. This was footage from a scrapped documentary project that I never got to complete, but I had the opportunity to attach a 360 camera to the bottom of a vintage World War II aircraft as it flew over the Sierra Nevada mountains. And all this seems to be working just fine. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is test rendering. From what I'm reading in Reddit, everything works just fine. So I was kind of curious, what did removing libeay32.dll potentially break? When I looked this file up, I found this document and I'll leave links in the description, but it says that the libeay32.dll 
is a library that contains encryption functions which allow for coded communications over networks. Now, I used this app a lot when I had the GoPro Fusion, and I never remembered any features that required network connectivity. So my assumption is, and I could be wrong here, is that GoPro might have been working on some additional features that required a network connection and they never released them. Well, they never made them available in the GUI, but the features probably like under the hood somewhere and still exist. So they left the DLL file in the package, even though it never actually got used. So removing it might not have broken anything about the tool. And I will leave these links in the description. I encourage all of you to do your own research. Always practice caution when someone on the internet that you don't know is telling you to change the file extensions of anything on your computer. You should always question it, always do your own research. Well, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time.